scarcity amid purported deregulation. Lingering fuel crisis squeezes businesses. Nigerian Employers Consultative Association, NECA warns. I am Bola Oroba and Fitz is plus politics. Nigeria's persistent fuel scarcity is having a negative impact on businesses. According to the Nigerian Employers Consultative Association, NECA, NECA Director General Adewale Smart Oyeri, they expressed concern about the situation, highlighting its potential to cripple productivity and economic activity. Oyeri, they pointed out the epileptic nature of the national electricity grid forcing many businesses, especially small and medium enterprises, SMEs, to rely on generators for power. The ongoing fuel crisis disrupts their ability to secure this essential fuel to secure this essential fuel hindering their operations. NECA fears that businesses will be forced to operate at lower capacity due to limited fuel availability. This, in turn, could lead to a decline in production and profits. Oyerin, they also raised the possibility of job cuts as companies struggle to cope with the situation. The association is calling for a long-term solution to the fuel crisis. While the recent release of fuel by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NMPCL, offered some temporary relief. NECA emphasizes the need for a more sustainable approach. This fuel shortage comes at a time when businesses are already facing various challenges, including rising costs. The additional burden of limited fuel access threatens to further strain the Nigerian economy. Joining us is the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman's Public Relations Officer Uchechuku Ukadike. We also have joining us a lawyer, advocate for good governance, justice and equity, Libora Soshoma, and an oil expert, Nick Agule. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Let's start with uh, Mr. Ukadike. You are the spokesperson of Ipman. It is just appropriate to, to let you kick off the ball. What, why are we in this mess? Mr. Okadike? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, although we are going out of the mess gradually, so we are no longer still in the mess. Uh, LMPCL who is the sole importer of uh, petroleum products uh, in Nigeria. Also, you should know that our refineries are not working. Uh, and the uh, government has quit it. We are the Potakot refinery and Kaduna refinery. We locally uh, produce petroleum products. Uh, the Dangote refinery is not producing now. It's only producing uh, automatic gasoline oil, which is HGO. So there are all the petroleum products, especially PMS, with the spermum motor spirit that we are using is all imported. So once there is a gap in terms of uh, sufficiency period, uh, it will definitely breach the chain of distribution. So when NBC gave uh, reasons for that, that there is a logistics problem, we got to do with both sourcing and the vessel. Uh, that now they are back and they have uh, imported over 1.3 liters of petroleum products for consumption of Nigerians. A, a follow up question to your very interesting and very uh, apt description of why we are where we are. But the follow up question that naturally comes is that there seems to be an oxymoron. The government claims that the, 
the petroleum industry has been deregulated. And yet, in your intro, you stated, as a matter of fact, anyway, that most Nigerians know, that is only the NMPCL that is, uh, that is important. If the sector is as deregulated as the government wants us to believe, why is it that is only the NMPCL that is important? When others too could have easily uh, imported products. And uh, when uh, the president announced uh, the removal of subsidy, uh, the depolarization of uh, the market uh, in line with the implementation of the DIA. Uh, the subsidy was removed and uh, the market was liberalized. Uh, I am aware that uh, over 20 marketers uh, applied for importation for petroleum license. Um, uh, and uh, they were graciously uh, you know, I awarded that um, uh, license, but uh, it just sounds like a round three or four companies was able, Emadev and the uh, Shafa and all the rest of them, was able to import uh, PMS into the country. And uh, you also remember then that uh, the benchmark for determining the price of petroleum products was uh, the dollar rate. And at that time, the dollar was around 750. And the PMS was a mark, benchmark within the price regime of for 500 or 400 or something naira per liter. So our petroleum product jumped from 100 or something naira per liter to around 500 or something to 400 or something naira. Based on uh, uh, the forex exchange at that time. And uh, when the product started, uh, uh, market started increasing their prices, the NMPC GMB also informed us that this uh, increase is based on dollarization. That uh, dollar is increasing, and once dollar is increasing, uh, we should expect that the domestic consumption of petroleum product will also increase in terms of prices. So, uh, uh, most of the marketers who were able to assess dollar debt, who went to the market, um, who went to import the petroleum products, will not be able to sustain the frustration of the dollar, and uh, it was carrying a uh, dollar rate at that particular point in time. And the uh, NMPC was telling them to buy products, in, uh, buy dollar at the private market, uh, which is uh, place that. Uh, but by, by their conversion rate, uh, petroleum products was at 1,600, the rate of dollar there should be between around uh, 1,500. Uh, this will drastically uh, impact on the economy. So I also believe that the uh, uh, federal government stepped in, the NMPC, to be able to introduce what we call party, party subsidy. So, uh, so the based uh, on that, uh, products still remain uh, at. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. 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 Of 500 to 700 naira per liter, you know, pending when we will see dollar uh, come back to its statutory uh, uh, over at 50 naira Mr. per Mr. dollar. Uh, uh, thank you for that very detailed explanation of where we are. But uh, simply put, there is still a form of subsidy as we speak. Yeah, yes, it's, 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 it's not a, it is, it is not a secret. It is, a, it is an open secret uh, that uh, federal government, one way or the other, is uh, uh, subsidizing uh, uh, petroleum products. Okay, I, I'll come back to you. They, they, they don't. I'll come, they I'll don't, come back to you. It will definitely um, cause unnecessary uh, inflation. I, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Ah, Liberal Zoshama, ah, Barista Liberal Zoshama, good to have you with us. I, 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 I particularly, I, please, please unmute your device. 
I particularly mentioned that you'll be invited for today's program, not so much because of the work you do uh, in the area of uh, good governance advocacy or in the area of uh, fighting for human rights, but because I know how you relate, you relate with uh, young persons and ordinary members of society in the area where you live and where you function. Now we have had the DG of NECA uh, openly state that this fuel shortage is squeezing businesses and that it may ultimately lead to uh, low productivity. Indeed, uh, he posited that it could lead to a retrenchment of workers, laying of workers. However, uh, Liboros, how would you describe what uh, fellow Nigerians and I guess yourself, myself, how would you describe what they have experienced in the last, say, two to three weeks regarding, uh, regarding getting full PMS? Yeah, thank you, Bola, but, but before I answer your question, I need to remind you that you are with me. Um, if you remember, a few years ago, when um, this deregulation, subsidy removal issue was uh, discussed, I had a bet with you, and you told me that I shouldn't worry that diesel had been deregulated and the price was going to come down. Since I had that bet, the price of diesel had never come down. And uh, so, uh, the moment I, I, I know I was must, going to be on this let, let me let me stay. Let me eat the humble pie. Yeah. Uh, we have had this running argument yourself and myself. And we seldom, we seldom hold different opinions, but yeah, exactly. I, 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 I'm a puritanical, I'm a puritanical deregulator, or I'm a puritanical campaigner for, for deregulation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes. it does seem, given the very sloppy way it's been, it's been done now, it does seem that you, you, you are winning the argument. So I must concede. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, um, before I go into the hardship, Bola, if you pick your newspaper, new, new Nigerian newspaper of 25th of March, 1975, caption, permit me to quickly read for you, um, caption is a uh, uh, new Nigerian newspaper. It says, scramble at petrol station, transport fare rises. Scramble at petrol station, transport fare rises. 50 also, years if after. You remember, 50 years. Also, if you remember, Bola, in nine, on the 30th of April, 1994, you still, I know you remember very well, you were in England then, we were in Nigeria here. The fuel crisis was biting so hard and people were blaming the military for coming. You know, despite the fact that they had fuel dump, they were still coming to buy in jerrycans with their Land Rover. It was so hectic. And today, 50 years after, we are still here. We are battling, we are discussing the regulation, where crisis, and um, who is uh, important and who is not important. And yet we are an oil-producing country. The problem is, unfortunately, our forefathers built pipeline for us those days. These days that the Russians have built gas pipeline from Russia to Europe to supply Europe pipe, uh, the gas, we cannot build pipeline. We cannot even maintain the pipelines that we have to at least supply PMS to all of the uh, uh, 20 depots across the Federation of Nigeria. We are still, still using buckets to transport even in unavailable fear from Port Harcourt or Lagos to Medjugorje, and you know what that means to man hour. Now, coming directly to your question, the, recently the federal government came up with um, uh, segmentation of uh, electricity users, despite the fact that there are no electricity. You had band A, you had band B, you had band C. And um, for those that were categorized under band A, they said the tariffs were increased. 
And that's already, because there's nobody really on that band A if we want to deceive ourselves, except you have people who consistently have 20 hours, you know, electricity. And there is none in Nigeria. If you have 20 hours for one week, consistently for one week, I can tell you some other weeks it would not be that consistent. That kept in one uh, kettle. At the inception of this administration, the government said that they were no longer subsidized to PMS. So the price automatically went up. Despite the fact that we kept on subsidizing the lifestyle of those in government. So that affected the cost of price, the basic things, you know, basic goods and services. And then also, the data was floated. That also increased the price of goods and services. So with the unavailability of PMS, it became worse. So for people like us, who they perceive in the area as having little, the pressure came down heavily. I know how many people are receiving in the office. You know, people you will call area boys. Who would come, all under the guise of coming to greet me, all they just want is 5,000 naira here, 10,000 naira there. And some cannot even afford to buy, because there's no light, so you can't even afford to buy fuel to buy generators. That's if you, if you have. And so, you ask yourself, my, my wife went to the supermarket recently, and the small Vaseline, that very small Vaseline we used to buy for 80 naira, 100 naira, is now about 1,700 naira. 1,700 naira. So I just use that as an example to drive home the point that all other goods, tomatoes, for example, you need to travel from uh, Bagada to my 12 to buy tomatoes. And the person who is bringing it from um, Meduguri or from Sokoto or from Kano, we need to truck it from Kano all the way to Lagos. And Dangote's uh, diesel, they said is 1,000 naira, but I have not been able to buy diesel for 1,200, 200, 219 naira. Not the top of 1,000 naira. Okay, so I'll come back to you. And the man told me, Sorry, quickly. And the man told me, go and buy Dangoteso because we don't have Dangoteso. So the multiplying effect is unimaginable. Now, I'll come back to you, Liboros. Uh, Nick Agule, you are more like the resident uh, oil, oil uh, man of this, uh, of this show now. We have so troubled you that sometimes I, I even take pity, pity on you. Nick, are you there? Very much. I am here. Uh, Nick, you can you can hear you can hear uh, Liboros making fun of some of us who believe that the regulation properly done who would have not only sorted the problem, the so-called problem of logistics that they are hiding behind the one finger on but would have at least brought some degree of stability to the market uh, how would you want to wh what is your position on what we purportedly have now that is being tagged or labeled the de de regulation or removal of subsidy when it is almost obvious the oil man the spokesperson of ipman has just stated that it is obvious that is uh, that uh, there is still a form of subsidy, which is the distortion of the market. Was I, I would want to kick it off? Uh, so these days, I like to describe myself as an energy expert uh, <laughs> because uh, we know that oil and gas is getting out of fashion. Perhaps oil faster than gas. So I would like to first respond to the executive secretary. Uh, he said we are over the problem, but we are not over the problem. Uh, what has happened is that we just applied Panadol to cancer, so we got uh, a bit of relief, but because the cancer is still there, we are still going to experience fuel scarcity. It's not about uh, if, it is about when, uh, because we haven't resolved the problem. And if you go back to 1975, and, and I mean, I, I'm so happy to share a platform with uh, Liboros. I, I watch him. So it's actually an honor to sit on the same panel with him. Uh, thank you so my, very my much, pleasure. Plus TV, for making it happen. Uh, by the way, Plus TV, I'm a retiree. A part of my commitment is to give back my knowledge 
which I gained in long years of working in the oil and gas industry back to Nigeria for free. So don't bother about uh, disturbing me. I'm ready here anytime you call. So uh, back to 1975, which uh, as uh, Liboro has quoted, uh, Nigeria was uh, 15 years old. I was nine years old. And uh, for 25 more years, if you had opened that newspaper into further pages, just as we had oil crisis, you would have also seen telephone crisis. So uh, we're addressing oil crisis. We're also addressing telephone crisis because uh, there were no enough telephones being supplied by NITA. Uh, in, in, in the year 2000 or thereabout, we are totally privatizing the sector. And when we privatize the sector, I remember when we privatize the sector, uh, I, I was working in the oil industry in Port Harcourt. Uh, MTN, uh, who were the first to come on scene, they were selling us phones, I think either 50,000 or 35,000, something like that. 50,000, 50,000. 50,000. Uh, 50, so they started with 50,000. They, they have what they call Tata Park. You know, yes. Tata Park, we have one small f uh, phone, a handset and a SIM card and all that. The starter pack was 50,000. Then other people saw them making money and they came on board. So before I know what's happening, three more people came on board and they crashed the prices to the extent now that you can go and get a SIM card for free, absolutely for free. So this is what happens in privatization. You do it well, you bring in competition and then the consumers become the king. What we did to telephone, we have refused to do it in the oil sector. And that is why till today Nekagule, to hear Nekagule, I, yes. I think it's not only in the oil sector that we have refused to do it. Look at what has happened in the power sector, especially electricity. The the uh, the madness that was called privatization or the the very dystopic this thing that that was called privatization. Apart from that, look at our ports. Other ports on the west coast of Africa are concessioned and activities in those ports will run smoothly. In Nigeria, we concessioned our ports and the port concessionaires became, became bottlenecks for the clearing <laughs> of goods. Are we, is something wrong with the way Nigerians do privatization except the one except just the odd one now because that telecoms one is becoming almost uh, almost the aberration rather than the the, uh, the normalcy i very much agree with you you took the words out of my mouth that uh, just as uh, the ministers for communication were addressing nigerians back in 1975 and we're not seeing telephones we now have nmpc addressing us and we are not seeing a uh, few. We hear uh, the Minister for Power, he's uh, busy addressing press conferences, and we are not seeing uh, electricity. It was the same way Minister of Communication, remember in one of the briefings, uh, a, a Minister of Communication actually landed himself in trouble when what he said was interpreted as telephone not being for the poor. It's the same way the Minister of Power today is addressing us and saying electricity is not for the poor. If you don't have money to pay band A, you can actually live in darkness. I don't care. You know, so this has happened now for, 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 for 50 years ongoing. Is because, in fact, if I take one step back, uh, just like uh, Liboro has quoted uh, the New Nigeria newspaper, I think I saw another newspaper clip, whether it's the New Nigeria or another one, and it was talking about the third national development plan back in that same 1975. And he talked about refineries. They are dead because they are in government control. He talked about steel plants. They are dead because they are in government control. He talks about electricity. It's only 3,000 megawatts for 200 million people because it's in government control. There were two other things that were in that development plan. LNG and telecoms. Those two have been properly privatized and they are the only two that are working. So for LNG, for instance, we have a plant in Boni. It started with train one, it's now to train seven. It's delivering dividends running into billions of dollars into government coffers. 
the same thing as telephones, instead of uh, making budgetary allocation for NITEL, that has become zero. Instead, the telecoms now contribute 15% to our GDP and put in humongous taxes. So they are now a revenue item on government uh, a budget instead of uh, NITEL that was the cost. And if you compare that with the NMPC, you see the NMPC is government owned by private and uh, by government government run. So NLNG is government owned private sector run. NMPC is government owned government run. And you can see they have refineries, they can't deal with them. They have been exploring for oil in the northern part of Nigeria since I was born. Not a single barrel has been produced. They have no petrochemical plant. Gas is being fled. They can't harness it. As you can hear now that one of the big reasons why we are still on 3,000 megawatts is gas supply. So is it not an anomaly that you are in a country that is one of the world's top most gas flaring nations? Nation. And the power plants are starved of gas. Uh, you know, because if you ask the Minister of Power uh, now... Uh, uh, I'll, come back you to you. I'll come back to you, Nick. Uh, always a pleasure having you, but I'll come back to you. Uh, Mr. Okay. Okadike, uh, one wonders... Is Mr. Okadike still there? Yes. Yeah. One I'm wonders. Here. One wonders. Uh, because you sounded quite optimistic uh, in your opening salvo, believing that we are turning the corner and that things will get uh, will get better soon. I, I guess that was what I designed from from your intro introduction. Having said that. Uh, one wonders if a powerful organization such as Ipman occasionally ask the, the NMPCL to at least, as a major player in the sector, to at least intimate you with its direction. Where is it going? What is going to be happening? Is this on and off and uh, Petrol is going to be available from December in Port Harcourt. Now they are telling us Port Harcourt is yet to even give us petrol. They are even dangling the carrot of Kaduna in front of our eyes. Uh, do, you, do you guys even get them to sit down and give you a very realistic, a very realistic uh, business, business plan? Yeah, well... Uh we we had a, we held a meeting with uh, uh, the MD of NMPCL, and uh, because now they say they are not privatized, uh, we are customers to NMPCL. Uh, they are not bounded to stop us uh, because they are also doing business, and since uh, they are doing business, we are also uh, at liberty to either do the business with them. Or look for somewhere else. So this is not when uh, they are uh, they are a kind of uh, uh, they must answer us or they uh, they they are answerable to us. No, this is not the kind the one they are answerable to us. The business is open. It's been privatized. The market has been liberalized. So you can buy a petroleum products from many sources. Uh, once you can be able to take them to your police station and uh, sell them. I know independent marketers. Mr. Okadike, Mr. Mr. Okadike, let me quickly come in there. You see, yeah. I guess the arrogance of an, of, of an establishment such, a, such as NMPCL to a powerful, a powerful organization such as yours, and which you are like. Um, people who make business happen for them would ordinarily be based on the fact that they know that head they win, tail they don't win. If there were to be a proper market scenario, no, Dangote cannot snub Ipman as we speak now because at the end of the day, you know, he cannot afford to ship everything he refines abroad. And if he wants to sell into Nigeria, he would have to deal with it, with Ipman. And ordinarily, we saw the way he engaged with Ipman recently by even saying that because of the demand that the local distributors and the local listing were making, he was ready to even make some price discount. 
That is the power of a relatively proper market. But this way that even somebody as I as you, the spokesperson of Hipman, you are saying that NMPC like believes that it could function the way it likes, it, it, it speaks to the fact that we have very deep fundamental problems. My thinking, just thinking aloud, how would you want to respond to that? Uh, well, uh, if you listen to my interview in Punch, uh, newspaper, uh, some months ago, uh, I made those postulations uh, on behalf of members of Whitman. But after, after our CWC meeting, we all agreed that uh, the price of this in Bangkok is very, very high. And as an off-taker, as a corporate off-taker, uh, uh, they should uh, be able to reduce the price. And although when they uh, reduce their price, you know, based on our, our, our appeal, uh, they didn't consult us. Uh, but I also believe that we are under stakeholders meeting tomorrow, whereby they will be able to uh, discuss with people. So the power of it, in terms of purchase, uh, is, 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 it cannot be waved away. Uh, by uh, treble hand. No, I also agree with you into that. But you also remember that we are independent marketers and uh, we have our own different uh, finishes the different CEO. Everybody is trying to make the ends meet. Uh, because of our huge investment, we also profit and service oriented. So you cannot be able, as an association, yes, you can be uh, at a particular point in time or within a space of period, be able to you know, a kind of, uh, you know, get your members with a trace on the market. You know, you can't stop them from going to buy whatever they want to buy or you kind of patronize whatever market they want to patronize. So that is, that is the problem. We have many other refinery also producing this diesel. All of them are also selling this uh, diesel at the international market with price. It was when Dangote came and reduced to 1,050. That's some of the sellers reduced to 1,100. Before they were selling this one at 1,400. And suddenly the prices of products being imported into this country. So you find out that those both the policy makers and uh, regulators are, have also already compromised. We are there at the receiving end. Our job is to take uh, buy petroleum products, take it to our finish station, and discharge and sell to the last person. Because if we don't, we will cost an unnecessary hardship to people. If we look at the diesel we are buying now, we are buying a diesel a thousand something. And some of our cross will travel for over four to five hundred kilometers to be able to take the petroleum products from the coastal area to the dry area. And this will cost close to two to two for two point five to three million uh, naira. And once you get to your destination, you must build in all your costs and also build in a little bit of profit to be able to pay your staff and maintain your filling uh, your filling stations. So we are not government agencies, sir. We are not government agencies. We are businessmen. But because of our business is very, very sensitive. Yeah, yeah, you know, also, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Kadike, that is why we find out that this situation. Mr. Kadike, Mr. Kadike, I'll come back to you, but I want you to be thinking over this. Uh, because it's something I w On the one hand, the NMPCL is the main supplier of, of the product or products. Yes. Uh, but on the other yes. hand, Ipman has more spread nationwide. At least the membership yes. of Ipman is far more widely spread nationwide than the retail end of NMPCL. And yet some of your members have claimed openly that they now even discriminate against you people in getting products. I'll come back to you on that. Uh, let me quickly go to Liberos. Liberos. Uh, uh, Liberos. Yes, I'm here. I, I'll be a bit unfair to you, you know, and the reason why I'll be a bit unfair to you is that um, uh, the likes of you, you know, yourself, the Falanos of this world, the... Uh, many of you who speak, and rightly so, for the downtrodden and the hard done by Nigerians. I, I sometimes also would like to hear you people tell them the fact that there is no free meal anywhere in the world, not even in Freetown. Now, you and I know, Liboros, 
that the, the corruption that you people fight against is actually built into, uh, paradoxically, is actually built into the anomaly of, say, of, of the government claiming that it's doing an ostensible good, say subsidy, but some people are misappropriating the good intention of the, go of the government, or indeed, some people in government are, are leveraging the lack of smooth play, uh, smooth market play to enrich themselves. What would be the solution that somebody, that is the question I want to ask you, which I really want to prepare yeah. you well enough. What would be the suggestion of people like you to the fact that this methodology is not working? The pretense to the pretense to tell the people that want to give them subsidy, and yet they don't get products, their life is miserable. Which direction are we going to be going? Uh, Bola, uh, in the first place, if, if um, we do what we're supposed to do, government will not be discussing subsidy. Um, in um, 1975, where you had a um, shortage of PMS, we had um, just one workable or two workable refinery at that time. Remember the 60,000 barrel per day refinery in Port uh, that was built in the 60s. So, and then I think uh, Wari Refinery. Subsequently, you had Cardona Refinery and another refinery, the 120,000 capacity refinery in Port Harcourt, built in the 90s. And apart from this, we had a we had, um, strategic reserve in Atlas Cove. And then we have about 20 depots, NMPC depots spread across the Federation. And you could pump and then you had gas pipeline, you had pipeline, both for crude and product, connecting all of these refineries to the depot. No, no tanker, no independent marketer or uh, a marketer had the bad business traveling from Meduguri, for example, to come lit fuel in Lagos. All you need, Kaduna refinery would service all the depot in those areas. So what you need would be to pump products from Kaduna refinery to the depot, and the depots will service the filling stations in those areas. And that is why, before now, there was no vehicle could come from Ibadan to come load products in Lagos. You had a depot in Lagos. You have a depot in Benin. You have a depot you have in... Mosimi, you have in, in Ore. In, you, have, a, you... you have in Ore. So you have this depot... You, when, even when we had 19 states, you had 20 depots, more than the states that we had. And so, these were strategic, so that we won't be talking about subsidizing PMS. But, but Liboros, because, Liboros, let, let, as a follow-up question, but, but quickly, Liboros, when we now talk about, yes. As a follow-up question to this very important point you've made, nobody can gainsay the logic the inherent logic of the point you've made because you have even gone into, into a historical antecedent. But Liboros, you would you agree with me that at some point, at some point, say from around the mid-1980s, the character of the public servant, of an average public servant in Nigeria changed from those who managed institutions, not only NMPC, in fact, Federal Palace Hotel, that used to be a, a government-owned entity, and a Ni Nigerian shipping line. There was a time that we had Nigeria Airways. We had a fleet of more than 20 aircraft. You know, there was a I time. I agree with and you. And suddenly... I agree with you. I, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. Let me make the point so that you can... In the era that you have just painted now, beautiful era which, we, which some of us experienced, they were the, the character of the public servants then relative to the character of those who see public service now as a gatekeeping opportunity as a you know get all you can can all you get and kick the can in, into the long grass somewhere in your house and bury it how would you want to reconcile that with the beautiful well, well, I... idea that you are putting forth now and that we have historically tested before. 
there was no time there was no time we had a fantastic civil service you remember the time of the super pump set the asiodus and the alice in aidas but maybe the madness was not maybe the madness was not this loud then so but once you have a leader who will whip everybody into line all of this madness will stop and so what happened was that when like Fidel Castro said in a land of lawlessness it becomes illegal to be law abiding when the leaders are lawless what they are telling the followers is that lawlessness fails when we start to give amnesty to to kidnappers we start to give amnesty to killers all in the name of oh, militants um, and bandits what they are telling people who have the capacity to kidnap but we're not kidnapping that it takes to kidnap and the moment we started compensating criminality corruption fester and so that is why the refineries when we do turn around maintenance those days will release where from uh, a strategic reserve to at least cover the period that the refineries will not be working while we were spending money on turn around maintenance nothing was being maintained not the talk of turning it around and at the end of the day all of them collapsed at the same time and then people started making money from importation and the moment they started making money from importation where else do they want to make money from again the uh, what do you call it the pipeline why is it that saudi arabia if you go to aramco today they will take you they take you to their pipeline monitoring room but like, you'll be marvel go to brazil Go to, uh, um, uh, what do you call Not it, uh, Qatar. You see that pipeline today are monitored with technology. I cited an example with Russia building pipelines from Russia to Europe, and they are monitored. So today, we say pipelines are being vandalized. You give contracts to uh, Tandis, Tandat, to, to monitor your pipeline. But like, like the example I gave, what you're doing, can you build a 25-story building with manual laborers? That's what we're doing. And so there is no way you are not going to be continually importing fuel, loading fuel. I pity the Ipman spokesperson. Loading fuel from Lagos to Meduguri to go and sell. You build in your, your, there's no way you are not going to build in the cost of that um, transportation. And then do you know that as we speak now, even the IOCs, are shortchanging Nigerians from crude produce. Let me tell you what is happening. Because of pipeline vandalization, if they are to, to, to pump 1,000 uh, 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 um, barrels of crude now, they pump 900 and tell you that, you know, uh, they pumped 1,000, 100 was, uh, was uh, 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 missing in the way because of pipeline vandalization. And yet, we refuse to protect the pipeline using um, uh, technology. And when you have that, even the uh, Kaduna Portacot refinery that we are talking about, do you know what happened, Bola? What they did was to use ROPG to flare the pipeline and give Abuja the impression that the pipeline, uh, sorry, the uh, refinery. They flared the refinery, and then we believed that the refinery was working. Why in that sense, mechanically, that refinery wasn't working? All of this put together is the reason why we consistently will continue to experience uh, uh, fuel queue, even though some persons are believing that it's too seeds, we soon seeds. We need to put our foot down and not run away from corruption and say, oh, the, everybody's corrupt, everybody's corrupt, until we have a leader who is not corrupt and who is ready to face corruption headlong and say, I don't want to take because if you are not taking, None of your subordinates will take. Uh, but, but when but you are I taking thought, but I and thought, you expect your subordinates uh, Liboros, not to take, there's certainly going to be problem. But, but, Liboros, but I thought they said the Buhari was not corrupt. The second time around was, uh, well, if, if he wasn't corrupt himself, at least <laughs> if, it if was the Buhari, first thing. If Buhari is not corrupt, and then he trade all his children abroad, despite the fact that he had more okay, than okay, okay, let me, and he wasn't collecting let, let me go to and then we expect we believe all of those, uh, Let me go to the, those, uh, they contributed. Uh, uh, you must remember. You must remember that they contributed for him to get the form, you know, for the presidential this thing the first time around. Uh, you, they said they he wasn't corrupt, for but the second time around. Didn't you know that Mefele? Mefele people contributed. Farmers, hungry farmers contributed a hundred million naira 
for a minute to buy for. Oh, I forgot. Is there any you, you, know, not you know, in Nigeria, one, one tend to forget these things quite easily. Ah, Nick Agule. Nick. Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Nick. Here, sir. Yes, I'm here. Ah, Nick. Okay. Uh, you see, I, I really, I really feel for somebody like you. Because, you know, you, you were not only an oil man in Nigeria, but you even worked in the industry outside Nigeria where things worked. And, uh, okay, Liberals has made a good case for corruption, uh, has been the chief, uh, the main culprit of why we, are, why, why we have this, this distortion and, uh, you know, you know bottlenecks. But what are the ideas that people like you would like to put on the table, even if they do, even if they don't listen to it? At least those ideas will be speaking against them. Uh, you want to you want to trade some ideas with us? Uh, yes, very, very much, uh, very much. Um, I agree with uh, Liboros that corruption is a problem, but it's not the causative factor. The causative factor is simply because government is still sitting on top of our refineries. We woke up today, we are using telephone. This uh, uh, conference call we are making is on telephone uh, through data or voice. And nobody is uh, complaining about corruption now. We have the telephone. The Minister of Communication is not addressing press conferences, telling us why there is no telephone, why telephone is down, when we will get telephone. Because this thing is in the hands of the private sector. So the real problem here is that government is sitting on top of our refineries. These refineries, two of them were sold, 51% stake, in 2007 for over $700 million. That's to tell you that these refineries are not rotten, as some Nigerians will make us to believe. There is value in the refineries. Can the government just simply step aside and hand over these refineries to those whose business is to refine? You know, and what has happened, the... the um, the what has happened in telecoms will happen in the oil sector as well let's not forget that as at the time the minister of communication was addressing press conferences nitel was supplying 500,000 lines and that was grossly inadequate and that is why there was all sort of racketeering and scarcity but the private sector is now delivered 212 million lines imagine 500,000 to 212 million of which 163 million are, are on data. So that is the kind of scale. Uh, as an OA man, I can tell Nigerians that between upstream and downstream, upstream will mean the, the, the act of looking for oil and bringing the oil to the surface, producing it to the surface. And then downstream is taking it from there to refineries and then into petrol stations. It costs a lot of money, technology, and expertise to do the upstream. Yeah. But because the yeah. upstream is in the hands of the private sector, we have never heard one day that Nigeria produced zero barrels of crude oil. Never. Since we started to produce in the 50s. And because the private sector is running that. Now, coming to the downstream, we handed it over to the NMPC. For almost of 20 years, this giant behemoth called the NMPC, whether they change their name to NMPC, see, CL uh, uh, doesn't change anything. It's the same way NEPA changed to power holding, yes, company, but never changed anything. Uh, he's unable to refine. And I mean, in the oil industry, you discover that refining itself is a very easy thing to do. Uh, you, you only just cook. You cook crude oil. Just cook it. You see what those boys are doing in, in the Niger Delta? They are doing proper refining. The diesel they are producing there in the Niger Delta is real diesel. Is this way that we work in energy because refining just means cook, cook petroleum. You cook it in fairy furnaces, and then you, you push that into a distillation unit. And at different uh, boiling points, different levels of temperature, the different oil products start to come out. So diesel will come out, uh, petrol will come out. You know, you can extract gas, you can extract uh, aviation fuel, kerosene, and all that. At different boiling points, this is what the NPC has been unable to do for us. Whereas the international oil companies are doing the, the, the bigger job, the greater job, the, the, the riskier job, because you can put $1 billion to explore for oil and you will not see enough in commercial quantities. Whereas refining, once you put crude oil into that uh, furnace and you boil it, you must see products. So if President Tinubu wants to solve this problem, 
He simply just needs to take these refineries away from the NNPC, put them in the hands of the private sector, and the But the last time, uh, Nick, we will not Nick, even be talking about corruption Nick, again as because the refineries will no Nick, longer be available Nick, sorry, to the NNPC or to the government Nick, to be, to be, to be corrupted, and we will have enough petroleum products. Uh, hello, Nick. Uh, uh, but the last time uh, a government attempted that, Olusha Mwabasson just sold Portacot, uh, uh, one of the one of the segments of Portacot refinery to Dangote and Hotel Dola. Immediately, Yadua came on, and the Aluta crowd and the Nigerian Labour Congress, and they, they went agog and said uh, things were not done right, and uh, monies were refunded. Those guys went their way. And the refinery has been comatose. People have been paid billions to to you know, as employees of a of a of a refinery that, that has been essentially comatose. And Dangote has gone has gone subsequently to go and start from scratch from Virgin Land to build one of the biggest refineries on the face of the earth. Something must be wrong with our public public servants. I, I think I think the situation is different now. Uh, President Tinubu should actually go ahead and do it. I don't think uh, he's going to receive the kind of pushback that he had back in 2007. Because Nigerians are now wiser. We now know that the NNPC is going to dribble us. The NNPC is going to... Because you see, the, the price we are paying at the pump, which the NNPC is forcing down our throats, includes the cost of taking crude oil from Nigeria to Singapore, the cost of refining it in a Singaporean refinery, paying salaries of uh, uh, Singaporean employees, paying taxes to Singaporean government, then uh, bringing uh, the, 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 the refined products again through shipping back to Nigeria, port handling charges, clearance, uh, okay, demurrage, me, everything uh, is in the to, 600 or 700 the, that Nigerians are paying let, now. Let me go to so, the just like uh, we fought off... I, I, I'll uh, come back to you for, uh, for the wrap-up. Uh, I'll come back to you. Let, let me go to Mr. Okadike. I, I, I really... Uh, Mr. Okadike, uh, you being the spokesperson of Ipman and given what the, what the market is now, especially for independent marketers, relative to the seeming advantage that NMPC accords is retailing outlets, relative to the seeming advantage that the NMPC has allegedly, according to some IPMA members, relative to the seeming advantage that the NMPC uh, reportedly and allegedly uh, accords uh, the oil majors whose outlets are not as many as Ipman's. Uh, one wonders what it takes to be an independent petroleum marketer at this juncture in our, in our, in our, at this juncture in our lives. You just want to give us the experience, what you, what you and your members, you know, the, the experience you daily confront to even be in business at all. And I guess you, I, I guess well, Ipan, well, yeah, Ipan well, will be the largest uh, employer in, very, uh, in the industry uh, or uh, in the sector because uh, you uh, employ uh, most ants. You know, the, 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 the uh, petrol station, uh, uh, um, uh, the handlers. I think it's very, very hilarious to be in business now. Uh, the business is no longer lucrative. Uh, I, I, I want to also inform you that uh, most Nigerians, when they finish their civil service, uh, most of them are retire in the farm, and uh, some of them also retire as an independent marketer because they also believe that uh, being an independent marketer, they will be able to fend for their children and secure a bright future for their kids. And uh, most of them invest. Uh, a huge amount of money uh, to establish a good filling stations. And if you look at most of our transactions in town and even in the internet, you will see it, uh, incredibly that uh, independent marketers have uh, independent marketers has increased uh, in terms of uh, updating their their filling stations and also 
uh, you know, bringing in sophisticated materials or uh, sophisticated pumps to be able to ensure that uh, uh, they can serve the marketers or serve individuals very, very well and consumers. Now, when immediately after the president's uh, announcement, price uh, skyrocketing, the business took another different dimension. Product we bought at uh, 8.1 million naira, uh, as of then, uh, came to 25.7 million. So most independent magazines cannot be able to recapitalize. Most of them decided to give their uh, uh, filling stations to NNPCL, and some of them uh, decided to convert their filling stations to uh, fishing ponds. And uh, it, it caused a lot of heart attacks. So many of our filling station owners have died uh, as a result of this. 8.1 million naira can get you 45,000 liters of petroleum products. And uh, well, even when well, this thing is easy, even at that particular point in time, so a filling station owners divide that 45,000 liters, maybe 15,000 in this station, the other 15,000. But when uh, within some few minutes uh, of that announcement, now product now becomes 25 point something million naira to be able to buy one truck. It was it was so mind boggling and uh, Mr. it Mr. brought in a lot of hypertension. And uh, stop them borrowing money from banks. They are not even able to repay the money they are from banks. I really, so they, I really, they, they, they I really empathize. And they can able to consult. I really business. empathize with so you. And uh, that all the members of the market uh, we can only hope and pray that things get better so that those of you who have uh, taken the great step of being in business would at least get value from your investment. Uh, but we really have to go now. The backroom boys are, are practically going agog on me. Uh, I want to say thank you, uh, Mr. Okadike, for your presence. I want to say thank you, Libora Zoshama, as usual, very engaging. Uh, I must concede again openly. You know me. I'm a very humble man. If I, I, I seem to be losing this argument. It's been over since that time of the protest to, uh, where, that they yes, did against 20, 20, Jonathan. 2012. <laughs> I was supporting Jonathan's uh, predisposition to deregulation then, but uh, you seem to be winning now. But I hope when it's done right. And uh, Nick Agule. Yes, I will concede. <laughs> Nick Agule, always a pleasure. Uh, we, will, we will not stop calling you when it comes to uh, oil and energy related matters. Thank you, gentlemen, for a good show. Yeah, my pleasure meeting you, Ben, uh, Nick, and uh, Ipa Preston. My pleasure meeting you. Uh, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate spokesman. it. I okay, thank time. you. We will have time to discuss. This is uh, where we wrap it for today. And. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.